Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My brothers and sisters, welcome to Service for Christ Baptist Church. This is the church where the Lord lives. This is the house where God resides. As well as everywhere else, he's omnipresent. So we give God today all of the praise, all of the honor, indeed, all of the glory. For he is worthy to be praised. My brothers and sisters, turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 1, Psalm chapter 1. And it reads as follows, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but I like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Amen. for all that you have done. Let us indeed bow for a word of meditation, indeed a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you on this wonderful rainy day that you have made. Bless us, dear God, for being able to come into the sanctuary where we can praise your holy and your righteous name. For you have told us, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. And so we're assembled, we are assembled here in spirit and in truth, we are assembled here through media, through Facebook, and through other media, DCTV, indeed CTV, in the presence of God and his people. We thank all of you who are watching this broadcast and who are participating. Bless, Lord, those victims of the coronavirus, all of our officials, elected officials, and unofficials, as well. Bless us all, God, according to your riches and to your glory. We give you all the praise for you died and shed your blood that we could have the right to eternal life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. May God bless you. My brothers and sisters, today we are going to have a selection uh, from Arlene Robinson and accompanied by her grandson, Zaire, as they come now to bring us a brief selection in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. I thank and praise God for his goodness to me because God is truly, truly good. But the thing I think that I'm the happiest about is the fact that this one. the Lord knows my name. Amen. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me. And oh, how you tell me that I am your Oh, how you 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. May God bless you. May God bless you. Thank you so much. And now, my brothers and sisters, we are ready to read the scripture to you, which is found in your Bibles in the book of Romans, chapter, amen, 715. Uh, and I, I, I uh, made a mistake on the um, Facebook narrative. I, I put 828. Maybe I wanted to preach from Romans 828. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, in fact, Romans uh, 7, uh, 715. And it's a very interesting place where, where we can go and meet the Lord in spirit and in truth. Of course, you know, 828 tells us that all things work together for the good. Yes, they do. And, and we definitely believe that all things do work together for the good to those uh, that, Lord, that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Yes. However, in, in the book of uh, Romans uh, chapter 7, we find a different pericope, a different narrative that is coming out of that, of that scripture. And so what I'd like to do then is to just get right into it. Uh, with you. Yes. And I, I like to just read it into your hearing. But before I do, I, I, I just want to read verse number 13 in Romans chapter 7, which says, uh, Was then that which is good made death unto me? You can go back and read the rest earlier. Uh, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, work of death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, yes. sold unto sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that do, I not. But what I hate, that do I. Mm. If then... I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in me. Today, I, I want to talk about the, the two natures of man. The two natures of man. Amen. And in... In, in, in talking about the two natures of man, we, we must recognize, first of all, that as Christians we have a sin nature. Yes. And we have a righteous nature. Yes. We have two natures. Yes. And many times you may wonder why is it that we are warring against our own self? Why is it that we are in conflict with who we are? Yes. And you might stand, you might sit, or you might wonder. Why is it that I do that which I do not want to do? Or why is it that I despise my own self when I go out and I do the ungodly thing? Yes. A big part of that is because, number one, we as Christians cannot control ourselves. Amen, somebody. Amen. You know, Jesus Christ, he, he came and he died that we might have life. And that we might have life more abundantly. Yes. Jesus did not come to do what Satan came to do. To steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus came that you might enjoy the richness of the rewards that God himself, God Almighty, has for you. And what God Almighty has for me. And what God Almighty has for mankind, wherever you are, wherever you sit, God has indeed uh, rewards for you. Yes. Some of you might wonder, uh, why in the world should I serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Who, who is this God that promises us all of the good things in life, the things that we can have, the things that we need, and the things that we want? Well, my brothers and sisters, all you have to do is turned in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, chapter 28. And what you will find there is some of the commands, the, the imperatives that God gives to each one of you. 
if you will only uh, resolve in yourself to serve and praise and honor God in a way that he deserves to be honored. In the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible teaches us, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. That is an imperative, a command to do what God has requested, required of you to do. Yeah. Which we learn to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord God will set thee on high yes. above all nations of the earth. Now, many people just don't really believe the word of God. Mm -hmm. And others do not want to adhere to the word of God. Yes. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2, he goes on to say, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if you are obedient to the word of God. Yes. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be the fruit of the body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy cow, the increase of thy kind. Whatever you have, you may not have cow. You may have some other type of commodity. But whatever you have, God is going to bless it if you obey his ordinances, his statutes, and his command. I talk about this over and over again. When I go to funerals, I preach on it. When I go to wedding ceremonies, I talk about it. Wherever I go, I talk about obeying the ordinances, the statutes, and the commands of God. Yes, yes. I wish I could just pour it into people. Everybody walk past me. I wish I could get a glass of it and just pour it in. Obey the ordinances, the statutes, and the commands of God. Then you walk around and you will be filled. But the anointing and the power of God inside of you. Yeah. But what we find in our lives is that we find ourselves indeed warring against our own self. Yes, yes. With the goat on the left hand, the righteous sheep on the right hand, and somewhere in between we find ourselves lost in turmoil, in pain, and suffering. Simply because we refuse to do what the Bible teaches us to do. You can go on and read for yourself the blessings that God will give you in, as described in the book of Deuteronomy 8.28. That was just a, a prelude to the sermon that I'm about to preach here. But I, I want to let you know that when you think that Jesus Christ does not have any power, that his dying, him coming to bring us salvation, him coming to bring us love, when you think that he does not have the ability, what I'd like you to do is just to simply read your Bible. Amen. Yes. And read what God teaches us about Jesus Christ cleansing the leper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Read the Bible and understand that Jesus Christ healed the centurion's servant. Amen. And Amen. read the Bible how he healed those sick in the evening and how he stilled the storm. And I say to people, all of the time that if you yourself feel all powerful, simply hold your hand up and stop the wind. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Jesus Christ healed two blind men. Jesus Christ healed them with a man's hand. He cured a demon-possessed man. Amen, somebody. Amen. He healed the epileptic boy and he cast out an unclean spirit and he healed a deaf mute. He caused those that could not see to see with their eyes that were closed. And some of us right now have open eyes, but we are still blinded to the truth about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what his power is and how much he can do in all of your lives to bring you into the fullness of yourself. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. He cleansed the ten lepers and he restored the servant ear after Peter was trying to defend him in the Garden of Gethsemane when they were getting ready to arrest Jesus and Peter cut off Michael's ear, the high priest's servant, because they were trying to arrest Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I stand as an ambassador for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my God, my God who took away the sin of the world for you and I that we could have the right to eternal life. Yes, my brothers and sisters, 
I give honor to each one of you who are with us today. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I believe in doing what is right. I believe in treating people according to how God would tell us to do it. Love thy brother as thyself. Do unto others yes. as you would have them to do unto you. My brothers and sisters, when we review the book of Romans, chapter 7, it gives us a little insight, a little insight into the question of who, in fact, is in charge of your life. And today, I would like to speak around this subject to take charge of your life. Yeah. A friend of mine, uh, Deacon Leo Brooks, told me don't call him General Brooks. He's the only black man that I know is a general and has two additional sons, all three generals in the family. Three generals in one family, all black, wow. all retired from the U.S. military. God. We would go play golf, and he would come up riding in his car, and all of us are standing around ready to pray, and he would say, who's in charge? I would always say, you're in charge. Why would I tell him that he's in charge? Not because he's a general or deacon emeritus at Alpha Street Baptist Church, my friend, Pastor Holly John Wesley there. I would tell him that because you are in charge of you. Yes, yes. Only you can make a decision about you. Yes, Pastor. And some of us make decisions that are good decisions, and some of you, like me, have made errant decisions in your life and have had to suffer the consequences. We all have. That's right. Yes. Some of you sitting there saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Just think about a decision that you made that was not the right decision and it impacted your wife, your life, your family, your job, or whatever it is. Think about some decision that you made and you know that that decision was not right or appropriate. Yes. Yes. The Bible teaches us, for what I am doing, I do not understand for that, for what I will to do, that I do not. Yes, yes. But what I, what I hate, that I do. That I do. Mm. The book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul. It was written to the church of Rome. And Paul could boast that he was a freeborn Roman citizen. I can boast today that I am an indigenous person. Personally, I am indigenous. Paul could boast that he was a Roman citizen. This epistle was written around A.D. 57, which was approximately 28 years after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yes. who was crucified at Calvary. Yes. At the time of writing this epistle, Paul was in Greece. On his third missionary journey. Some people won't even leave the front door to go across the street to witness to anybody. Many of Paul's writings dealt with particular matters in the church. How the church was not functioning right. And how the church was allowing sin to creep into the church. And how the church could recover and do things appropriately and according to the will of God. So that the church would be standing on the right foundation. Many churches uh, not standing on the right foundation. Even the Pope has recently said that now he too is encouraging civil unions. I want to know what does he think about Leviticus uh, 8 uh, Leviticus 8 when it talks about uh, that a man uh, shall not lie with a woman as a man. A man shall not lie, lie with a man as a woman. I want to know what he thinks about that, but he says civil unions, the Pope. Oh, okay. What is Christianity coming to? How much deeper do we have to go in the sin before we recognize that God's wrath is going to come out on all flesh, and God, when his wrath comes out, it's going to come out in such a way that it's going to be devastating to mankind. Yes. The Bible teaches us that he that have an ear he that have an ear, let him hear what thus say the Lord. Amen. Amen. This watered Amen. down, sprinkled down gospel 
that is not propagating the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the grace and the mercy of God is insufficient. Insufficient to what it is that God would have us to do. Yes. Paul has prepared theological documents which discuss in detail the essence of the Christian faith. I don't know about you. I heard Reverend Nikita Wilson say on our Bible study that she was in love with Jesus Christ yeah. last Wednesday night yeah, at 7.15. Mm -hmm. I thought about what she said and I said, you know what? I bet to ante up. I bet to get up. I bet to, I ought to say that I too am in love with Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm in love with my God. So I want to do all I can to be a great ambassador for the love that God shares with me and you. Yes. Yes. Paul is baffled, but he's not ignorant as to what is wrong. The problem is how to overcome what is wrong inside of our lives and how to overcome knowing how to take over our lives and not allow Satan to wreak havoc on our lives in every single way possible. Yes, yes. You are in charge. Take control of your life. Yes. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, but because of what I'm doing, I don't want to do it. I don't want to be an adulterer. I'm doing it. I don't want to be a fornicator. I'm doing it. I don't want to steal. I'm doing it. I don't want to rob. I don't want to have the city in this. I don't want to lie, cheat, murder. I don't want to do anything that is outside the will of God. But what I find myself doing, amen, somebody. Uh, I find myself doing the things that I do not want to do. Yes, Pastor, yes. Although the Apostle Paul penned these words well over 1,900 years ago, can you imagine for one second what Adam and Eve must have been thinking, my brothers and sisters, uh, when their eyes were opened after they had eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Uh, and not only that, God had already commanded Adam and Eve, saying, Of every tree of the God thou may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Yes, yes. Surely you will die. Shall not eat of it, surely you will die. When they ate from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you have to ask yourself the question, who was in charge? Did they take charge of their own life? Was Satan in charge? Was Christ in charge? Were the scriptures of God in charge? And although Satan came to Jesus later, he approached Jesus in the same way that he approached the woman Eve in the Garden of Eden and the serpent, uh, he was considered an unclean animal by the Hebrews. Uh, it was the instrument of Satan who was the source of author of evil and evil in your life and corruption in your life and all the pestilence that you have inside of your life. It is Satan that is wrecking havoc in your life. It is not Jesus Christ because I, if we were to follow Jesus Christ, amen, somebody. If we were to follow the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, amen. If we were to follow him, and we would have love and peace Amen. inside of our lives. Yes, yes. You see, it was the yielding by mankind to Satan and wickedness that took the keys and the dominion of God's creation out of man's hand and gave it to Satan. How much of your life do you give to Satan and wickedness because you too refuse to obey the ordinances, the statutes, and the commands of God? Yes, he's the prince of this world, but Jesus is the ruler. And yet we ask ourselves the question, are you in charge of your life? What kind of temptation do you succumb to? Right now, do you succumb to the temptation of drugs? Do you succumb to the temptation of alcohol? What about false worship, idolatry? Do you succumb to the root of all evil, the love of money? 
How about food? Somebody overeating? Do you succumb to the love of food that damages your body and places all types of chemicals in your body? That's right. What about gossip? Do you succumb to gossip? Spreading rumors or innuendo. How about talking about the pastor? Is that sufficient for you? Or do you give time to idle chatter as Miriam and Aaron did when they were complaining about who Moses married? Are you in the corner talking about things that you ought to be praying about? Are you there when you should be saying, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do inside of my life. Amen. Do you give God the praise that he deserves instead of complaining and talking about things that have no relevance to the upbuilding of the kingdom of God? Amen. Do you honor your mother and do you honor your father? Yeah. Do you talk about co-workers or just sit and profess to be a real and true Christian? I don't think many of us are being truthful. I don't know about you, but again, I have certainly been guilty of some of these things. Amen. And like many of you ask myself, why do I do the things that I do not want to do? And I, am I in charge? Am I taking control of my life? What about you? In your self-reflection, are you taking control of your life? Are you doing the things that will make your life better? It's not that I don't want to do the right thing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Yeah. Now, I know that it is not me who does these things that I do not want to do. It is sin living in me within me. Yeah. The two natures of man I spoke about at the beginning of the message. Uh, the, the righteous nature and the sin nature. You see, we are constantly engaged of a war within ourselves. We're split. Yes, we are. Even when we attempt to do good, the scripture says that evil is right there present with us. Yeah. This means whenever you are tempted to do something good, whenever, whether it's on your job or in your community or in your church or in your home or wherever you are, this means that when you are trying to be a good Christian, hallelujah, and when you are making a sacrifice for others, whether you know the person or not, when you're making a sacrifice, you must remember that evil is always present when you are trying uh, to do the right thing. For our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Evil is not going to walk away or run away. Evil is going to be there tempting you and me every step of the way. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Satan is coming here to steal, to kill, and destroy your best efforts. And constantly trying to get you into a mind of that one that is causing you to do the things that you do not want to do. Do you understand that what you did and what you wanted to do, Satan is the adversary. Yes, yeah. he yeah. is. He's the one that you have better look out for. He's the one that sneaks up on you like a serpent. Yeah. You're unaware that he is present in your home when you're not praying for your wife, when you're not praying for your life, when you're not praying, hallelujah, for your family, when you're not getting down and bowing your knee. Don't you know Satan is right there whispering in your ear, uh, don't pray, hallelujah, don't go to church, uh, don't send your tithes in, uh, don't do nothing. Nothing that is going to glorify God yeah. Yeah. present yeah. with you always. Yeah. Yeah. He's your enemy. Mm -hmm. That's why I like where Psalm number 7, verse number 10, that tells us that my defense is of God. Mm. My defense is of God. Mm -hmm. The one who sent his son, Jesus Christ, that we might have the right to eternal life. Yeah. Now, not only that, my brother and sister, let, 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 uh, let me move ahead. He, he, he is a king of kings. Uh, uh, he's the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He's the first one to be resurrected into the newness of life. Amen. Uh, he's the one that sits on the right hand of God the Father. I'm talking about the Alpha and the Omega. He is the one who is truly in charge 
when he was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit after being baptized of John in the Jordan, hallelujah, uh, and Satan approached God, Jesus Christ, with the same madness uh, that he approached Adam and Eve with, hallelujah. Uh, Satan thought that he could, uh, uh, that, that, that Jesus Christ would succumb to the same temptation because he was in the human flesh, but what he didn't know and what he did know was that that was God Almighty standing before him and Satan uh, is trying to get God to succumb to the same wickedness uh, that he tries to get you and I uh, to come to in the first instance, my brother and sister. Yes, he thought that Jesus would succumb to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And what he said to Jesus is the same thing that he says to you. Yes, yes. If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Yes. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, amen, he shall give his angels charge over thee concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you indeed dash your foot against a stone. Hmm. And then finally he said to Jesus, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Mm. The book of Romans talks about it. The book of Romans teaches us very clearly that many of us fall down and we worship the creature rather than the creator. This form of temptation we still face today in our ministries, in our homes, on our jobs, in our relationships. We still face these things. You and I. For when we start to think about whether we are in charge of our lives, we must remember we would do good and whenever we want to do good, that evil always is present. always present with us. Always. We must know that in our flesh dwells no good thing. We must know that the forces for good and evil are constantly trying to take control of us. Yes. When you want to do what is right, the sinful nature rises up. Yes, it does. I'm trying to do the right thing, and here comes the sin nature. Here it comes. I'm trying to do the right thing, and here comes the sin nature. Here it comes. And who, who is in charge of you? Are you going to allow God Almighty to be in charge of your life and have mercy upon you? Or are you going to allow the sin nature to overtake your righteous nature? I'm asking always, are you in charge of your life? Do you allow your righteous nature to take control and then your righteous nature is in charge of your life? Who's in charge of you? Who, who is in charge of you? If you act and talk like you are a Christian when you are in church and then you go home and you act and talk like the people on the street, if you curse, swear, and do all other things that are an abomination to our God who died and shed his blood and was resurrected on the third day so that you and I could have the right to eternal life, are you acting in a righteous way or unrighteous way? My mother always teaches me, she says, I'm the righteousness of God. I say, he did without sin, let him cast the first stone. She said, go to your room. <laughs> When things are going good and, and bad things are happening to you, remember that these things are coming from the unrighteous nature or Satan himself. You can no longer say, I do not understand. For what I will to do, according to the scripture, that I do not practice. That's interesting. A lot of people want to come to church. A lot of people want to give to the church. A lot of people want to do the right things in their life. A lot of people want to have good relationships with people. But for some reason, they can't do it. Mm -hmm. Take control of your life, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. That, that, that you yourself have a chance to change the way you are. And you have a chance to adjust your life to be even better than what you are right now. You can accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. You can begin right now by stating that today and from this point going forward, I'm going to push back on that sinful nature. I'm going to allow my righteous nature to come forward 
with the love and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I'm going to push the sin nature back to oblivion that it doesn't exist anymore. And I'm going to push forth the righteous nature. I'm going to take control of my life. And you yourself right now can take control of your life if you will only push back the sin nature and allow the righteous nature to come forth with boldness, with courage, and with power. That you can say, God Almighty, help me in my moment of weakness. Yes, yes. Satan, you are exposed today. Amen. I know you're going to attack me. Go ahead. Attack. Because what God has told me, that there's no weapon formed against me that will prosper. Yes, hallelujah. I stand on the word of God. Yes. I'm begging, pleading, and praying to all Christians throughout the world. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the righteous promises that God has given to each one of us. Yes. When he tells us in the book of Matthew, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, that I, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. Yes. You can say to Satan, you will no longer hold me hostage to myself. No you one. will no longer have me worrying against my own self. No longer. I'm pushing back on the unrighteous nature. I'm bringing forth the love and the mercy and the grace of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're no longer going to hold me as a prisoner to myself. Yes, no longer. Today I know who is in charge of me. Today I'm taking control of my life. For And I'm saying to you, Satan, I am in charge because Jesus Christ died that I could have the right to eternal life. Jesus came and he said that I've come that you might have life and that you might have liberty. Jesus brought us those things. Yes, he did. His resurrection from the dead at Calvary, as he died, was buried and resurrection according, resurrected according to the scriptures. Yes. My charge to you today, as you go in your different places, and as I used to ask General Brooks, when General Bruce came on and he said, on to the golf course, and he said, who's in charge? I said, you are. Mm. Yeah. Ask yourself today, who is in charge? And answer the question, I am. You are in charge. You make the decisions about your life. Yeah. Yes, yes, my, uh, my brothers and sisters, when the Bible teaches us these words, in the book of Romans, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, it teaches us something very, very profound and something that we're really, really interested in is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he came and he died so that you and I could enjoy this right to eternal life and that God's love would be present with us throughout all eternity. I don't know about you, but if you have not turned your life over to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you need to rethink your strategy. I'm offering you today salvation and a place in God's kingdom that you can come and join in this church. Whether you're online, offline, or whether you're watching in your home or in your car or wherever you might be even at this hour. The Bible is very clear to us that those who believe and turn their lives over to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, somebody, that God is going to bless you abundantly according to what we read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And God is teaching us where we stand and where we sit, these words here that God has given to us. He said to us these words very clearly. Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Yes, yes. For we know that the law is spiritual, mm. but I am calm. Sold on the sin, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that do, I not. But what I hate, that do I. Mm. We have to move from doing the things that we hate and doing the things that God would have us to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So therefore, my charge to you today Stop playing around with God. The Bible teaches us that God will not be mocked. 
If you think that God will be mocked, then play with God and you will reap the consequences of your playfulness. Mm. My brother and sister, simply put, I'm just asking you to take control of your life in a way that you've never taken control of before. Read your Bible daily. Study the scripture daily. Many of you are out there right now in the pandemic and can't move. Yeah. Afraid to move. Afraid to get up. Afraid to go out. Take charge of your life. God has given you this time to be in your homes. Read your Bible. Study the word of God. Pray to God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Yeah. For what you've done. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next Sunday I'll come back and I'll do a little hooping and howling. Who knows? A lot of people don't get moved until they receive some hooping. That's not the way that God trained me to hoop. God trained me to be an ambassador for him and to deliver the word with boldness, with courage, and power. Yeah. I thank God Almighty for everything that he's done. Let's pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word of God, for the delivery through the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Be with us, Lord God, as we continue to worship here at Servants for Christ Baptist Church, 713 Katy Drive in Fort Washington, Maryland. Thank you, dear Lord, for sustaining this church, even though we run into sharp opposition, chaos, and confusion. We thank you for being faithful to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you that would like to contact us, you can contact us on servantsforchristinc.org. That is servantsforchristinc.org. There you will find our contact information, our ministries, our Bible study, our broadcasts, our various broadcasts. You can watch us again at 11 o'clock on uh, Facebook. Reverend Harry Lundy will be preaching. And those of you that want to contribute to our ministry, to support the ministry, we, 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 we're asking you to support the ministry in any way that you can. Once again, you can go to our website, servantsforchristinc.org. And for those of you that want to join, send us an email if you want to join virtually. We already have several members who have joined virtually. Amen. You too can join. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died for your sin, well, I'll transgress, I'll transgress in my sin. And then you can be saved and become a part of the God family. I don't know about you, but recently I found out a little bit about my heritage. You know, and it teaches you that you can really enjoy and appreciate when you go to the place where you belong. Joining in with the body of Christ, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, will bring you into that place where you belong. You will feel like that you're at home. My sister and brother, may God bless you. For those of you that have accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, raise, wave your hand at home and say, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Let us bow and pray for you right now. Thank you, Lord, for those who have accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, those who are praying, those who will receive the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Grant your blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. That as they grow in grace, as they receive God Almighty, we pray, God, hallelujah, that you will bring them into the newness of life and that you will allow them to go out and evangelize and be witness for you throughout the whole world as we continue to prosper, as we continue to grow. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. May God bless you richly. Amen. 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 God bless you.